Looking for the right holiday outfits without breaking the bank? JCPenney is a one-stop shop for the whole family. Whether you're dressing up or dressing down, JCPenney has a great range of apparel for men, women, and kids. So you can spend less time doing this and more time doing this. Make your holidays count. JCPenney. Shop in store or jcp.com. You have the food, the decorations, but you're running out of time to get the perfect holiday gifts. Good thing Sephora offers free same-day delivery. Order the best fragrance, makeup, skincare, and hair care gifts online and have them delivered from the store to your door today. No order minimums, only with free same-day delivery at Sephora. Use code GETGIFTS. Oh, Sephora, that was fast. Offer ends December 24th. Exclusions and terms apply. Beauty insiders only. One-time use available in select markets. This holiday season, give the gift of prohibition with the award-winning Remus Bourbon. Remus is inspired by the finest bourbon of the Roaring Twenties with a hint of vanilla, maple aroma, and sweet high rye flavor. Whether you're giving or receiving, experience a taste of prohibition by finding Remus now at remusbourbon.com. Be legendary. Sip responsibly. Straight bourbon whiskey, 47% alcohol by volume. Ross & Squibb Distillery, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. This episode is brought to you by Amazon. It's not too late to get your holiday shopping done with amazing last minute deals on Amazon. Take your holiday budget further with the deals on everything you need, like the hottest gifts, latest gadgets, and most wanted gear at a price that suits you. Shop last minute deals today. Visit amazon.com slash holiday deals 23. Back at it again with another shade of blue. My name is Cody Bradley. I am here with David Greenwald, Robert Russert, and Thad Bell. Greetings. Greetings. Dave, David, I saw both Cody and Thad kind of walking a little gingerly this morning. I, I don't know what that's from. Did they not stretch before their <laughs> rigorous indoor soccer game yesterday? I don't I'm, know. I am moving very well today. I feel great. <laughs> Thad looks, Thad looks spry. I'm moving as well as I normally do, which isn't <laughs> great, but hey. It is the morning after the Comets' exciting comeback victory over St. Louis. And... Oh, beat the St. Louis Bastards. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was a great game. It was entertaining, wasn't it? I mean, how, how would you not like that game, even if you weren't a big indoor fan? It was... Like my, my friends that I brought, because I, we had the media game at halftime. So I had some friends there, and... Uh, yeah, they were they, they loved the product on the field, the blue field, music during the games, comeback win. It's a good night. All the glory of indoor soccer. A couple of goals by a young guy, Junior Kazim, the game winner, and with less than a minute left. Junior is nice. I like him. I do too. I wish he would play a little bit more, but he only basically got on the field because there was people hurt. Well, player of the game seems like he's doing what he needs. I to voted do. for him number one star. So the media game was at halftime. Thad and I were on a team. We won. We got a, a streak going here. That was that was a games. comeback, also. Actually, I called it media game. It was a celebrity game. We can't sell ourselves short here. It was a celebrity game. Uh, there was like forty people on the field. There was still a little more room than I. I, I was more tired than I was expecting. Well, so I thought were, I wasn't was the be able numbers to touch concentrated it. on each end and nobody yeah. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was trying to float back into space the whole time, but. Yeah, you you played well. I mean, you had a lot of shots. I had a shot and I missed. You had more shot than one, through you? traffic. No, I was I was trying to be very unselfish. I, ha- I should have had like three assists. I was putting the ball into the mixer and all that, but uh, no, no one no one helped me out. Well, Cody, I feel so, you, man. I feel you. So, in in light of our Roger Espinosa interview, which if you haven't listened to, you should go back and check out. You know, Cody, you you have boyish good looks. You, oh. You're very youthful. Um, but you are in your 30s. Yeah. And so my question to you is the same as to Roger. What does it take for you to get ready for one of these games? <laughs> I feel like based on, you know, you get up and you look at yourself in the morning in the mirror and you're like, oh, I don't have any wrinkles. I look young. I look like I'm in my 20s. I just go out and run around. David, David. And that's how you tear something. So are you stretching? Are you doing yoga? What are you, what are you doing? No, to I, will, I think he had a beer. I was, yes, there was, there was beers pregame. Uh, 
But then, yeah, I, shamelessly, I was stretching in the tunnel there. I don't. I feel like it looks stupid. I wouldn't want to be like caught on a camera, like stretching for this game. But like, of course, you have to do that. I'm, I'm not trying yeah, to die I was, out there. I was, I was Cody, doing a little thought, light stretching. I thought you were the guy who you know ate eggs in the morning. You know, drank those down. Went for a run every morning. Is that not you? No, I thought that was no. you. Sorry, I okay. appreciate shattered. That. I, it makes me feel good that you think that would be me, though. <laughs> Well, you know, we say that, and I'm looking straight across this table to a shelf full of whiskey and other alcohol, so maybe I don't think that of you. We're stocked here. It never <laughs> gets drank, but we do have a lot of whiskey and other things here. <laughs> Cody, just remember, it's, you know, recovery is super important. So it's about load management. You've got a couple other <laughs> media games to play in this year. You know, you, you got to go easy on yourself. It's a valid point. You bring up a good point. I need to take it easy today. Sit back a little bit. So, okay, yeah, media game was good. We were on, Thad and I were, were facing off uh, with another podcast. I don't think we, we, we didn't get, uh, the rivalry didn't come across too much there. Thad didn't get to check anyone into the boards or anything. Well, like I that. did. I like, they were scared of you I guys. did foul Jimmy. Oh, okay, good. I did foul him. I mean, that, that was my contribution to the entire game is I fouled people and nobody, there's nobody to call it, so I just get away with it. All right. Steve there, Serrano, I just grabbed him and pulled him away from the ball. There was like a ref of some sort. I don't was that yeah. a was that a celebrity or he worked for the team or who was that guy? I was told he's a referee at oh. one of the indoor soccer places at the dome, soccer oh. dome. I, again, I don't know if this is true. Him. He looked like a musician. I thought maybe he was like a famous person. Well, somebody said he was also an agent for an actor who was in the game. Oh wow. Odd assortment of people that were at this gathering. And he looked more like uh, one of like an 80s drop dead Fred yeah. kind of movie kind of guy. But yeah, 80s, very 80s. Yeah. I mean, he would have had a leather jacket on. It would have been perfect. Or, or like in a dangly or, earring. Or what was that? Uh, <laughs> what was that sh- British show? The Young Ones? Like oh, Rick man. Mayall or somebody? I don't know. Robert is going to have to help you here because this, <laughs> well, this is beyond me. So I want to go back to this rivalry was, though. So our friends, well, Jimmy, yeah. fellow contributor to TBT, their pod has an acronym, and uh, this doesn't really work because we're missing a letter, but uh, I would like to play them in every media game, and because we have Cody, who's a Golazo machine, we can always right. ask the question after the media game, did Jimmy and Dan win? And like the acronym of their pod, we just can say, nope. Nope. <laughs> There's a third person on that pod, Chris, now. Oh, I don't listen, so I didn't know that. You worked very hard. That was There was a good joke in there somewhere. It worked. I you know. had to work a little hard I at know. it. It came out a little slow, but that was a good yeah, joke. Yeah, it was just well a little done. too long was all it was. Well done. Well done. No so did pod, anyone, in, you know. anyone impress in the media game that you guys were surprised by? Surprised by? Yeah. No, no, literally no one impressed me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Sperry scored a goal that was nice, but just because of the ability of the goalie. And he also missed me as a sitter at the buzzer. He took a shot from like 20 yards out instead of passing me the ball right by the right by the goal. But anyway. It, we actually had a former professional player on our team, and he was very unselfish and passed the ball every time, I think. Yeah. So instead of taking shots. But there were so many people in front of their goal. Like on, on our end, there was a goalie and like two defenders, me and one other person. So we were like watching like five, eight people come at us a lot of times. And then on the other end, they were just like eight people standing in their goal in their box. So Carrington Harrison got the ball a lot, but just because he's tall, it just the, <laughs> the keeper would just throw it to the first red shirt he saw, and that was Carrington Harrison. Who was our keeper? I have no idea. I was on the attacking end. I was making things happen up front. I wasn't all the way over there. I got a hug from him. That's about all I know. <laughs> that was good. It was like a successful a night. Ginger messy over here. Oh Damn Lord, right. don't build his ego yeah, anymore. You guys, are, you guys are making me feel great today. <laughs> no, I'm trying to I'm trying to build the legend of Cody Bradley for media games oh, to make it one, like a like an uh, a bar that he can't live up to. If that one shot just would have gone in, the leg, it just I would have never let the show live it down. I would have been talking <laughs> yes, about the it word throughout. legend is thrown around way too easily these yeah. days. <laughs> Plus I'm sure Cody's just happy to be on the same team with me because I won't we don't have to talk shit at each other. There you go. 
And because, like you said, like you just said, you were grabbing people and pushing oh, yeah. people around. I, yeah, that'll take cheap shots. That's why I want to. Yeah, no, I, I will. <laughs> I will throw rabbit punches and kidneys in fucking media games, man. Like, <laughs> Robert, I'm, I'm setting up a pod where we I can do win. like a media game, like greatest of all time pod, where it can be Nate Bucati, you know, his service into the box. Kobe that was finishing. one moment. I, I'm. We're Classic. look. It takes time to develop content. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Real soccer. We talked oh. about the comments. That was real soccer. You didn't use air quotes when you said real. We're talking about preseason now, yeah? <laughs> okay, well, yes, that's that's true. It is it is almost real soccer, preseason soccer. Real Sporting ish? KC drew 2-2 two to two with Louisville City. Two second-half goals from Remy Voltaire. Uh, former friend, Wilson Harris, got a goal for Lou City. She knows when Sporting described Lou City, they – mentioned the USL championship powerhouse was that to make themselves feel better for if in case they didn't win that game or draw it at least are they I was assuming that that meant they won the league last year who won the USL last year I don't remember who won it but Lou City is actually always very really good they won it they recently are, they are typically very good so yeah I would rather they join MLS than some of the other teams that are getting talked about yeah don't argue with you there better than Vegas or yeah, Vegas is out aren't they do their we, owner buy a Premier League team instead of? No team, is, no city <laughs> is out until it's been a named. So, do we regret letting Wilson Harris go? Yes, I do. But I mean, you know, he may have wanted to leave, and Vermees has said a lot of times that if a player doesn't want to be there, he's not going to hold him back. I'm sure Wilson wanted more playing time. Yeah. But last year he had 15 goals and three assists for Louisville city. He was there. He won their golden boot. Um, the kid can just tear up the USL championship. And I don't know that he'll ever be DP quality for MLS, but he can absolutely contribute. I mean, he's going to bang in more goals than Kyrie will. So how come no MLS team has picked him up? That's a good question. That was actually what I was going to ask. When you say golden boot, did you mean for, for the team? For his team. Okay, not for the league. Yeah. I don't, is it, do we call that a golden boot? Mm-hmm. I mean, the club refers to Shallowy as winning the golden boot. But I don't like that. Led the team in goals. Okay. So, so you don't want Shallowy to have a little boot trophy sitting on his mantle someplace? Why are you so mean? I no, thought it should I be a golden boot. Guy. We, should, we can give them a trophy, but I don't like calling this a golden boot. That's a tournament thing. Among other teams, it's not a, just leading your team. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. Well, can there be one for the it's league? My take on this. It's my Noted. take on this. I have no other thoughts. <laughs> I, just, I don't like that. Re- I mean, why did he not get signed? I don't know. There's any number of reasons why a player mm-hmm. may or may not get signed. That doesn't mean that a team didn't try to sign him. Um, it reminds me of Keith Langford to turn this into a basketball podcast. Nice. But Keith Langford played at KU and was really good. And at one point was the highest paid American in Europe. And he got asked one time, like, why don't you play in the NBA? He said, like, I could be the fourth guard off the bench in Milwaukee. And I'll, I'll be in Minnesota on a Tuesday night making the league minimum to maybe play a minute a game. Or I can start for AC Milan and make a million dollars a year and see the world. So so Harris, he, makes, he was making more? Yeah, he was than, making. Than you would as a bench player in the NBA? Yeah. And so Harris, yeah. probably not. I don't, you know. League minimum for MLS is not very high. So, you know, making that into the roster salary is probably comparable, maybe, uh, to a top tier USL. I would I mean, say probably, yeah. You know, but it might be a matter of he wants playing time. He wants to be able to showcase his talents more than just being a spot rotation guy. Plus, other MLS teams might be looking to see if he's, if it's he's a, a one season wonder kind of thing where yeah. he's playing full time, which. If he paid attention to when he was with SKC2, that's not really the case. We know that, but. But I know I would love to have him back. I think a lot of it just depends on the style of the team. So he'd be our third striker? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll scoff at that once once we have two guys with double-digit goals, three guys with double-digit goals this year. Doesn't mean we wouldn't like to have him on the team as an option. I mean, I would trade unless, him for Kyrie. Unless one of those guys is Kyrie. <laughs> yeah. This Kyrie shows up with with ten goals. Yeah, this year. but Wilson can't play wing. So just to you know clear up any confusion, Willie Agata and Johnny Russell shared the Golden Boot last season. Not the Golden Boot. 
Per the not golden boot. Per the not golden boot. Yeah, offensive right. player. Sir I Cody it, Bradley's. I, just to clear up any so confusion that some people may be feeling. That's different than the offensive player of the year that they give. Right. Correct. Because that, that's that's subjective. Where just who may, how who scored the most goals? That's not subjective. That's just a fact. So all teams do this. I'm not just nitpicking. At Davidson. Okay. Well, I don't know if they all do, but a lot I do. Like I don't like it. <laughs> Doesn't count. So to finish talking about. So who was who was the golden boot for the media game? <laughs> I don't know. I can't even remember. Oh, well, Cody, of course. No, uh, I'm, I'll give it to I'll give it to Sperry because he's the only goal that I can remember being scored. Shouldn't we at least have the guy on so he can like do? Robert, do you need to accept the the award in his honor? <laughs> sure. Okay. When are you guys recording your? I don't know. Blue turf. No. I'm sure he'll take Keeping full current? credit. Keeping then. current. That's the one that Sperry's on. Yeah. Uh, uh, whenever we get a chance, whenever there's actual news to talk about, that's. <laughs> okay. So with this Louisville game, they, you know, we swap out the roster quite a bit, like all the preseason games. I don't know that there's anything you can really tell from, you know, what these lineups were. Zeus, he was in at one point in the, the second group or the first group of subs, if you will, second group of players with Ndenbe, Volader, uh, Chris Rendov, who was a draft pick, Roger, uh, Marinos, John East. We, you know, um, the starting lineup had Pools Camp, Caden Pierre, Courtney Ford, Ben Sweat, Felipe Hernandez playing the six, uh, and then two trialists up top. So it, it doesn't really... And this is why I said at the beginning that we should use air quotes when we're talking about real soccer. These aren't real lineups. This is not even remotely close to what our lineups are going to look like when the ball kicks off in three weeks. So I don't know if there's really anything you can tell from it. Yeah, on Friday, Vermees talked about how, you know, since Rodoy is not in yet, not able to play, he's been kind of experimenting with people at the six to see, you know, who might work there. But I tell you, Johnny's has had a good preseason. You want to pick one person. He drew a penalty uh, in the game yesterday, and he's had a couple goals. So... Maybe he's going to be a different player for us this year. A couple of goals against a very not high level college team. Hey, but still, yeah, you get in a rhythm, you get in, you get that confidence as a player that can do wonders for you. Yeah. How many goals did Kyrie score against the college team? <laughs> <laughs> if Johnny, I don't know if Kyrie played at all, but if Johnny takes a step above what he was last year, that would be that would be massive for yeah. this team. Yeah, that would be massive. So Wednesday is Real Salt Lake, two p.m. Central Time. Yeah, and It'll I would not be televised. Yeah, be ready for that the live feed on SKC match day because it won't be on television. I would imagine some of the guys that did not play in this last game, they were because you're not wanting to play them four days apart, sort of thing. So that's probably right. why some of those guys didn't play. They'll get more time maybe in that game. And you guys saw, of course, that the Chiefs and Sporting will be sharing the hotel. That's pretty cool. I liked in the media availability that they just added that on at the end that. Oh, we had a question submitted <laughs> right? <laughs> from just the universe submitted this question about to Peter Vermees about what it's like or just a vague are, reference. Are, are you suggesting that wasn't a legitimately submitted <laughs> question from some member of media that they forgot to mention? Uh, no, I was just I just was fascinated at the way it was just plugged in there that they said it. And a question submitted. I don't know. It tickled me. <laughs> And Peter seemed annoyed that he had to, like, he was like, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, we're in the same hotel. Okay, cool. Yeah. I would <laughs> love to see a meeting of the minds between Reed and Vermees. <laughs> like, see Vermees patrolling the sidelines with that big old mustache. And then, like, <laughs> you know, the NFL coaches aren't allowed to wear suits, but, you know, Peter's particularly well dressed and Andy Reed is not. You said they're would, not allowed? Yeah. What? That's true. They, so NFL coaches. Um, Are they used to? NFL, co- well, back in ye yeah, olden times, right, yeah. but NFL coaches are required to wear gear from the apparel sponsor, so Nike. Wow. And a few years ago when they had Reebok, um, Jack Del Rio and the San Francisco coach who got fired pretty quickly both wanted to wear suits as like a throwback to their dads who had been coaches. And they were allowed for two games each to wear suits that were made by Reebok. <laughs> and so if you opened up the jacket, it had, like, the Reebok logo. Um, but the NFL had to make, like, a special exception because they're supposed to wear, like, these, you know, hoodies or pullovers or T-shirts or whatever, which is why every coach in the NFL wears, like, just team gear. An NBA and an NFL reference so far. Actually, oh, yeah. let's go full circle. On the note of what a league will allow, uh, the Royals just announced that they're doing the full, boo- full powder blue jerseys, which the league – 
didn't used to let them. They had to wear the white pants. And now I guess they just finally got approval to go full powder blue. It's good news. The Royals? Who? Oh, okay. Did I not say that properly? <laughs> no, no, you, you most did. certainly did. And I was just and dissing on the Royals. To oh. take this full circle. <laughs> they deserve it. My they favorite do. thing about baseball is that the managers wear the uniform. Yes, right, it's the it's only so sport where the me. managers wear the uniform. True, I would. They're full kit wankers. I would die to see Vermees. <laughs> I bet he still looks great in the kit too. I, he probably wears the Dom Dwyer like one size too small, and just like douse himself in water to make it look real good. But like, I would love to see Vermees with shorts and like the high socks. Yeah, but PV rocks the hell out of a suit though. He looks he so does. good on the so sideline in those suits, Definitely. even when he falls down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still <laughs> looks cool even slipping on the sideline. Even even when somebody jumps and hugs him right. and kisses him <laughs> and chokes him. <laughs> uh, so what else did we he from this media availability besides the the uh, question there at the end? Uh, he was asked about his contract, which is up at the end of this year. Yep. He was asked about the national team job tangently on that same line of questioning, and we didn't get anything from him. Of course. Well, no, you're not going to. That's he declined to comment. He's, he can't comment on something that hasn't happened if they've signed a contract. If he was actually interested in a national team job, he probably wouldn't say it in this format anyway. And nobody specifically asked him if he was interested in it, I don't think. It was just that you were a candidate for it before. and blah, blah, blah. So he was able to kind of dance around it without saying that. It was a vague reference to it. He yeah. was very complimentary of Berhalter along the way. He was. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it would behoove him to be so. I mean, right, what's exactly. he going to do? Say something bad about Berhalter oh, yeah. and then Berhalter the comes fact, back, He didn't right? have to mention Berhalter at all, but he did. Yeah, yeah, but it's Peter... Well, if people are asking him about the coaching job... Yeah. Right. You know, 12, 15 years ago, he, Peter may not have been as complimentary about it or something, <laughs> but he has learned to be much more diplomatic and tactful and politically wise in this sort of thing, so he's going to be complimentary or he's not going to comment. Did anybody ask him what his relationship is like with Gio Reyna? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's one thing he mentioned Berhalter for that purpose, that he's supporting of Berhalter in this situation. So I think it was more than just an offhand mention. Though. I don't think it was just him being nice. Because I don't think per- Peter Vermees just tries to be nice to be nice. I think people have to earn his niceness. Looking for the right holiday outfits without breaking the bank? J.C. Penney is a one-stop shop for the whole family. Whether you're dressing up or dressing down, J.C. Penney has a great range of apparel for men, women, and kids. So you can spend less time doing this and more time doing this. Make your holidays count. J.C. Penney. Shop in store or jcp.com. And now, Lexus presents a short holiday tale. Angela drove her Lexus GX over the snowy hill, surprised to discover a man with a broken sled and three Siberian Huskies. How she found them was anyone's guess. Was it her keen intuition, or did her co-pilot Clark actually guide the way? The first theory is more likely, yet the other makes for a better tale. Enjoy the magic of the season at the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 2nd. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Yeah, I don't blame Peter for being at least somewhat supportive of Burhalter anyway, because it's a difficult job. We they got to where they were supposed to. Uh, we don't know all the other difficulties that was back there with Reina and all that stuff going on. And that's really all he said was, yeah, you know, he did he did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, he right. did it. He did a good job, which I think he did a good job. He, another coach might have been able to do a better job. That's always a debatable thing, and other coaches would have done a worse job. So it's all fair. We can. We don't want to rehash the entire World Cup. Although I don't know, did we ever rehash the entire World Cup? We talked a lot about that saga as it was unfolding. Yeah. Anyway, the other bit that we got from that press conference was that Peter seemed to indicate that a new center back is on the way. So they were working. I, I would take it that yeah, they're still working on signing one. I mean, they might have somebody in the pipeline, but. Right, but the way he said was, yeah, we'll be know. signing someone. Yeah, it's it but seemed like he that could be a trialist also. I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, it, which wouldn't be very impressive at this point. Sorry, trialist number seven. I think there would be a mutiny. 
I, Cauldron Facebook is going to riot if in the same offseason that we talked about signing Cristiano Ronaldo, our fourth center back is a trialist. The draft pick. The draft pick. People will lose their minds. Well, that's people, you know, there's that old saying, you know, there's no bad press. I mean, people talking about a team, sometimes good and bad is good. Sometimes not, as long as people show up. Again, what well, if the fourth center back is signed and it's uh, Chris Rindoff, I think is his name, and he almost never plays, and team wins a lot of games because they have a strong midfield and they score three goals a game from Agata, who cares? It'd be fun to watch. Yeah. Just because there would be a little drama at the back line every once in a while, what's, you know, no team's perfect. All right. Robert, you interviewed Ben Sweat recently, and I thought there were a couple good bits from that interview, specifically uh, a question about him, his opinion on the new signing of another outside back. Which, uh, what, Liebold showed up in camp Friday? Is that his first day, I think? But, yeah, I asked Ben about it because, obviously, it's a big deal for him and, and Logan, the, the competition aspect of it, and just, just a little out there. He said, uh, yeah, it's a little of a head-scratcher because it wasn't a needed position. There is a business side to soccer, so they have to do something. I don't know what their plan is. Um, he also elaborated a little bit more, saying that, you know, Logan and I are starter quality, and, um, you know, he just is confused by the move. He even mentioned that he might move. Uh, maybe they'll move him over to center back a little bit because we need another center back, as we were just talking about. But people freaked out, speaking of that, David, on Facebook, uh, Cauldron. <laughs> but no, we don't want Ben Sweat doing center back. But, uh, yeah, um, I think we're all perplexed about the situation as far as the left back goes. Yeah, it's definitely one of those, if they, they have their eye on a player and if he becomes available, they're going to sign him. That's what they did with Felipe Gutierrez. We kind of thought that was a a packed midfield at one point. Now, having one too many midfielders is one thing. Having one too many left backs is another. Well, what's one too many, though? Because, I I mean, I asked Peter that question. You don't normally carry three left backs. And he just went into the, well, you know, we never know when there's going to be an injury and et cetera, et cetera. And maybe because he knows Sweat is getting a little bit older and coming off you know, a previous knee injury and, and Dembe had an injury last year. Maybe that is one reason they went ahead and pulled the trigger on a, a left back that they had had in their vision board. And you got to think maybe in Denbe it was not terribly impressive as much as they thought he would be. Maybe he didn't live up to what they thought he'd be. I know he's young, but uh, he did not see a lot of playing time. I know there was an injury, but... Um, I think in Denbe was... Impressed the most of the three U twenty twos that they brought in. Well, he's the only one who consistently played, right? Yeah, he got the most playing time. But you know, not playing the U twenty twos is a financial and roster building head scratcher. Yeah, the whole point of it is to get in guys who hit their salary budget differently, so that you can get young players in who can contribute. Because if you just want to sign young guys. For cheap, you just sign him at the back end of the roster. You go get a guy like Wilson Harris. You don't need to pay a transfer fee for Marino Shonis. And part of it is that the league as a whole wants to be a selling league. They want these players in to impress for a couple years and then to be flipped to Europe because it's also part of how the league's going to continue to recruit better and better talent. So to sign a U22 and then just not play them at all um, – you know, year one, you're trying to get them used to the system. You're trying to develop trust in them. I suppose I can understand that. But, you know, if we see Volader and Johnny's just riding on the bench again this year, it's a complete waste of money. It's a it's a missed transfer fee, um, and it's pretty head-scratching. Well, okay, yes, that's right. But what if one or, you know, one of them is just bad, and that's why he's not out there? Like, well, we have, we've, I've already decided he's not, you know, then that was just the signing was the mistake as opposed to right. Well, not then, playing him. But that then goes into, you know, our scouting, you know, scouting misses happen everywhere, but it's also a matter of if a player's not good enough, you got to get rid of him. This is a salary capped league with limited roster space. You can't just 
have a loan army. You can't just have guys rot on the bench because you can afford to, even though the club, you know, like the Cliff Illig can afford to pay whoever he wants, whatever he wants. The league budget rules don't allow you to do that. So if let's just say Marino Shawnees isn't good enough, then they needed to sell him and find a way to part with him be, and then get in a new U 22 signing. That's the whole point of this, um, mechanism if you will i would almost want to see janice off the bench just as a general rule like every game <laughs> like so, uh, uh, for one of the wingers you know johnny russell uh, several years ago was only going 60 minutes a game so it's like that that's that's pretty much what happened with marinos last year was he made actually 27 appearances uh, I think only six of them were stars, but he made uh, it was 765 minutes. So like we said, Ndembe got more time. He had less games he appeared in, but he had like twice as much minutes because he started certain games and went through most of it. Yeah. Where Johnny's came off the bench a lot in the that last 10 or 15 minutes, and he brought something different, which is really no different than a, a Wilson Harris or somebody else would, which would be in a, that third forward whichever role that is that's what john east was and he can he can kind of do both sides or the middle or in the midfield so he's a very good utility player even if he's not starting regularly in a spot and he's also had that time to adjust and as we've seen he's been a goal scoring machine against low level colleges this year so maybe that's all changed now you know going back to the sweat interview and Ndenbe, sweat said that you know the plan for him come back from his acl was get him a game here or there you know as the season went along but then he played nine of the last 10 games. That may have been the plan all along is Sweat is the number one choice here. Uh, we're going to have to give Ndenbe time because he's still recovering, you know, early in the season. But, you know, I want to be a fly in the wall at the Vermees household. Ever since the Sestinovic days, has Vermees woken up in the, you know, dripping sweat, screaming, left back, oh, left misses. back. <laughs> I need another left back. <laughs> well, so maybe that's why Leibold was signed because, you know, hey, left back yeah. is his torture. And as Peter said when I asked him about signing the third left back, he said uh, the exact words, I don't know, but that that's one of the hardest positions to fill anywhere in the world. So when yeah. you have a problem, yeah, that's you, it's harder to find one. You can find a right back easier than you can find a left back. You yeah. can find a center back easier than you can find a left back. So that's probably why. He's always been – we've always taken it he's trying to replace Sesanovic, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, we kind of worried about that. But maybe it was always you're just trying to find that the hardest position to fill. They have extra goalies. You can find a goalie, a journeyman goalie who can get you through games. But if you have no left backs, it's – some right backs can play over there. A lot can't. You, you know, So that's that's maybe why. Yeah. I don't, I'm going cool with that. Part of this is that it's a business. And to be able to buy other players, you need money coming in. Forbes just came out with their MLS 2023 valuations. So LAFC is the number one club valued at a billion dollars. Their 2022 revenue is 116 million and their operating income, they made $8 million. So MLS teams are still not making tons of money, no. but LA is also has a huge roster outlay in terms of salary. They've got guys like Carlos Vela. They had Garrett Bale. So sporting for context is all the way down at number his numbers are inflated, by the well, way. Number 12, <laughs> valued at 590 million. 2022 revenue was 59 million. Operating income was minus 3 million. So they're in the red. So those two numbers right there, on what planet gives them an, ev an evaluation of almost 600 million? Potential. I, I, I get that, I guess, but... Right, well, it's also, it's also it's overall assets. It's infrastructure, it's yeah. pinnacle, it's yeah. the stadium. Um, scouting Slope. network, yeah. Like, there's all sorts of things that go into evaluation that don't sure. necessarily require you to be operating in the black. These MLS but, numbers are inflated, though. Sure. I'm going off of what Forbes has, which is more than what Cody Bradley's offered me in terms of numbers. In my personal <laughs> record book, these these clubs are not worth that much. Yes, this ledger. Uh, Club is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. So right. if you were wanting an M uh, MLS team an in L.A., <laughs> If you were will, if you were wanting to buy a team in M in LA, you have two choices: those that old broken, busted team, or that new hot team, the one that's worth a billion dollars. But my point in bringing this up, though, is that you know, when we spend big money on Pulido and he's never available, when we spend big transfer fees on Volader and Johnny's and Ndenbe, 
big relative. Uh, yeah, it was I mean, a big, big uh, relative to all of the I free transfers we've values. gotten. I still think it's great value. Because uh, we paid, what, six-figure, seven-figure transfer fees for each of those guys. Um, I don't know. The whole point is to try to flip them to, one, make money, and, two, allow you to buy other players. You sell Gianluca Busio so that you can get in the next Gianluca Busio. Uh, this isn't a destination league. It's not the Premier League where you can just buy the best guys and let them rot and eventually move them on for whatever because you're owned by some sort of oil conglomerate like Cody's team who's currently losing one nothing to my Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> I, I will love not how you have that in there. <laughs> we we can't talk about Manchester City spending more money because the the operating costs came out and Manchester City is not even in the top ten of world of club clubs around the world in their spending. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there's really ten other terrible spending clubs in the world. So you're taking that as a there's like, like a there's twelve <laughs> more and Tottenham is one of them. Does that include our they, they billion sp- dollar stadium? That's the crown jewel of Stadiums in England. Okay, let's not turn this into a freaking England podcast. Okay, okay, well, we have the crown jewel of of strikers in Holland, so mm. you can be proud That's of your stadium. Who, who has, How's who that has going zero, so far? Who has zero goals in <laughs> seventy one minutes so far? Seventy one <laughs> minutes. You mean in the last seventy one minutes? That's right. <laughs> so far. That's right. So sometimes there's that you know that saying there's addition by subtraction. Sometimes getting a big name striker is subtraction by addition. So they play worse by having the one guy that everybody's going to put the ball to. I don't know. Tottenham's uh, megastar striker, Harry Kane scored a goal, but Erling Holland hasn't. It's weird. It's, it's almost like Harry Kane might be better than Erling Holland. Yeah, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. What for are the our, standings say? Well, I, I mean, the man is going to break the all time scoring record in the premier league. So you tell me it's bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, this is it's the shades of blue Derby. Sorry, this is a big Sunday for us. Uh, see, I'm just basically giving each one of you shit because <laughs> I couldn't care less. I like watching the game, but I don't care who wins. So speaking of giving people shit, Robert, I'm not going to mention my team. By the way, in this whole discussion, I feel bad being too mean to a Tottenham fan, so I'm just going <laughs> to let him. Know. Robert, speaking of giving people shit, so there was another part of your Ben Sweat interview where you asked about the guys giving each other a hard time. So 2022 was the year of the calf. Between Logan and Dinbe Great calves. and Courtney Ford Sox, we had a <laughs> whole lot of chat about calves. What is 2023 going to be the year of? Well, according to Mr. Ben Sweat, it's going to be the year of uh, the schnoz. Yes, <laughs> he says here that uh, uh, they give me definitely heck for my nose. Shallowy's got a big nose. I've got a big nose. Timmy's got a big nose. We always kill each other. The ongoing slaughter between all of us. I've so there never, you are, David. I've never noticed this. I am still going to be focused on the calves. I love a good calf, but uh, the, there's a lot of big noses, some schnozes on this team. You're going to have a schnoz rankings? Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to a schnoz power ranking. Yeah. Is that... Does that help you go faster, like be streamlined, you know, like a rocket? Or <laughs> if there's a crosswind, does it throw you off on your shot a little yeah, bit? Yeah, but there's two holes in it, and I feel like that creates some That could some explain drag. a lot, though. That could explain a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll have to get some uh, physicists in here to, you know, determine the air quality around their noses or something. I don't know. No, the intimidating factor of Emilio's nose is why he stops PKs. We need to, we need to <laughs> talk to the it team. It lets him come off the line faster. <laughs> right. We need to talk to the team for their social, you know, during all the preseason social media stuff, they've been interviewing them. And, you know, you're stranded on a, des- on a deserted island. Who do you want to be with? You know, and shout out to PJ. She's killing it with those videos. Largely Zeusy, you know, is rugged enough to survive outdoors. But maybe we can maybe we can ask her to to give to see if the players would do a schnoz power ranking. I would love to see what Johnny Russell has to say. <laughs> Timmy's got to be number one on that list. Yes, I do think it has something to do with his success in PKs. <laughs> What if it's swollen from being hit in the face? Right there, you go. It does look like it looks like it's been through a lot. Tim's nose. I'm not you know, sure. I've actually your nose does grow throughout your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should know. <laughs> what are Snaj rankings here on the pod? I don't know. <laughs> we got some good noses around here. Okay. Any final thoughts here? Uh, not about noses. Be on the lookout. Kit release comes out February 16th. February 16th. We will drop a podcast that day, and we're going to record in the days leading up to that with Chad and and uh, another member of his team. Probably Thomas. 
Although Thomas I Earl, think, I, I think, think is who it'll be. He was yeah. there with us last year. There was some like ginger envy though, so we'll see if Cody I will like let it. Thomas come back on. Oh wait, I, I, all the gingers. I like to support my ginger brethren, so he will. We can have him back on. That's well, one of our. Saw. It's one of our most listened to podcasts every year. We love doing that. We're yeah. big. We're big kit guys because we like to know what goes into the design and the. And the Chad kitter. and Chad is just he's a very good guest. Uh, he tells us about the whole process, which is very interesting. He's open about it, and uh, yeah, it's a really good show. If you saw the video Sporting put out, Eric Tommy is very confident we're going to like this kit. So I'm excited. The video annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> Because you don't what? know what it is. Yeah. I, I go into footy headlines multiple times a day trying to see if there's a leak. And I, a bunch of the other MLS teams have leaks. And every year, Chad is able to keep the singer wraps. It's well, so and that's why that's why we won't be able to do this podcast until probably the day before. Because they're so tight-lipped on everything. And they don't ever get this leaked. And it's because they don't do stuff like that. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, they're smart about it. And when it has leaked in the past, it's been because like a retailer, like Dix or somebody, yeah. accidentally put it online early. Or okay, that is February sixteenth. What it, so predictions? What do you, what do you think the kit will look like, or what are you hoping the kit looks like? No idea. So this is replacing. It's primary. This is replacing hoops three point oh, the light one. Yeah. Oh man. I don't even know. I'm thinking Argyle. I'm going to guess Argyle. Some some form of Argyle in there? Some form of Argyle. Remember, it was uh, one of the problems was with the the sponsor having that fit in the on the chest there. So could it be a smaller Argyle across the top or one a loop around or they've always kept those the three diamonds of the Argyle uh, in the branding and in one way or another, we've seen that. Yeah. So, yeah, it would stand to reason that that will come back at some point. I'm trying to pull up my secret Twitter because the club always in their, like, marketing materials or in their tweets, the Instagram posts, always starts to give, like, subtle hints about what the theme is. Yeah. No, they just come out with new branding for, like, for the website every year, and that is obviously built off of whatever jersey has come out. So, yes, it's, you can kind of sometimes piece together. Yeah, like last year they it. did a state line... Thing behind the badge on the Twitter yeah, logo. Can't see right. it on the jersey, but I got nothing. At least, uh, at least we can have some confidence that it won't be a uh, club foot Montreal issue. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they're not even going to have like a new kit because they've screwed something up. Yep. Yeah, they can't do anything right. What I think happened there, they, so they said that they were they were doing something with the indigenous people of the area. And there was something on the jersey, and I I think they said they were going to work with them, and then they probably never did. And then they realized as this was about to come out that they didn't ever like have any approval or work with these people in any way. So that that they've decided, holy crap, we can't release this. We gotta wait. Or that they were even maybe they were even told that there was a problem with. Yeah, like it was misspelled or yeah, like, you yeah. know, instead of saying we we're we we're one with the people, it said we screw the people or something. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Just but. very them. Very that club. Have they done anything right since they rebranded? It doesn't feel right. Well, they got the Kai Kamara situation all screwed up too, apparently. So yeah, I mean, since they rebranded again, you mean because they messed up one rebrand? Well, I mean, since well, since the first rebrand after they were from Montreal Impact, ever since then, yeah. it's been the butthole logo. It, yeah, it's not been great. No, and I don't know what's going on with Kai, but. Kai comes right out and says, yeah, I wanted to stay here, but now I want to leave. I don't, have we heard anything more about Kai? Didn't get the contract he wanted is all I know. So, All right, gentlemen. Let's, let's end on a good note. Club World Cup. Seattle Sounders. <laughs> Seattle <lost>. Zero. <laughs> Al Ali of the Egyptian League won. In a, in a late winner. Never, ever forget that Seattle sucks. Seattle sucks. Go Sporting! Woo! Don't seem so tough And three on goals Ain't all that rough Our skipper has just been sent off Some part of strong and ball Comes off my butt for tings Got me drinking My butt for tings Got me drinking My foot
buttons got me drinking. Give me beer or whiskey, one or gin, anything to shake this foot I'm in. My foot buttons got me drinking. My foot buttons got me drinking. My foot buttons got me drinking.